I love the church. You can all be seated. I don't need you to stand up right now. I just want to say I love the church. Amen. You know, we are such a privileged and blessed people. Just to be able to come to the house and get together and love one another, Brother Dustin, and worship God in spirit and in truth. We are such a blessed people to be able just to read our Bible. And we are such a blessed people to know God and the power of His resurrection. And it don't just end there, it's the fellowship of His sufferings. I'm so thankful for just the things that God speaks to me, the things that God shows me, the very real and ever-present help that God is to me. We should have got some amens right there. I mean, come on. I mean, we are very blessed people. And I think somehow we've kind of lost sight of that. You know, we are very blessed people. You know, the song says, you see me, you know me. But some of our problem is, and I felt like the Lord spoke to me a while ago, is we, we don't want to let God love us. You know, He sees us and He knows us. And He wants to love us, but we won't let Him. Because we got too much stuff standing in the way. Doubts, fears, whatever it is, whatever your hang-up is. We have things that are standing between us and God and stopping Him from really knowing us the way that He wants to know us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can you really say to me, I know you and I love you? You know, can you really say that to God? You know, it's, it's about knowing Him. Thank you, sister. It's about knowing Him. And it was our responsibility to get to know God on a daily basis. I mean, He paid such a great price for us to be able to come before His throne daily with grace and mercy. He gave praise you know, he, he walked to Calvary's hill. He took those stripes on his back. And he died a very horrible, horrible death on that cross. Just so the veil could be rent in the temple. And we would have access to his spirit. Just so we could come before his throne boldly. You know, we have such a great, great privilege in this church. We have such a great privilege in our walk with God. Because he wants to know us so much. He wants to be close to us so much that he was willing to die. That he was willing to shed his own blood. That he was willing to go to Calvary's hill. We have such a great, a great responsibility to, to, to bow our knee to him on a daily basis. We have such a great responsibility to get in his word, to get to know him. To do the things that he wants us to do. I've been reading in the book of Kings and... and Every king I read about, I just, I want to cheer them on, especially when they, it starts off saying they did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I just want to cheer them on because I want them to win, but somehow, some way at the end of their life, they, they lose out with God. You know, they didn't take away their, their, what their position with God. It's just they made a mistake, you know, but they, they spent their whole lives trusting God and calling upon his name only to have a circumstance or a situation come along that knocked them out of the will of God. And you and I are no different today. You know, we start off on this race with, with such exuberance and such faith and such love and such joy, and then something comes our way, no matter what it is, and it kind of knocks us down. We kind of stop looking at God. We stop, we stop getting in His Word. We stop reading. We stop praying. And we start looking at our problems. We start looking at the things that are going on around us. And then we start looking down instead of looking up. Because the Bible says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. That's where we're supposed to be looking at tonight. We're supposed to be looking to the hills from which cometh our help. Because our help comes from God. It don't, don't come from a self-help book. It don't come from dear Abby. It don't come from anybody. It comes from God. find out what I need to do in my family. All I got to do is go get on my knees before God and ask him to do it. I just love the Lord today. I can't, I can't seem to get past that. I just love the Lord. And you know, no matter what that he sends in me in my life, I've been through a lot of junk and a lot of garbage. Okay, and I care not to go into it, but I have. 
But God has always been with me. God has always been patient and loving and kind. You know, even when I wasn't. But he was always patient, loving and kind with me. And he is to every one of us. And there's another thing about those kings that, that I realize that we need to start doing in our own lives. Is we need to start seeking God with our whole heart. You know, instead of just halfway, you know, Pastor preached a message a couple weeks ago about your, your heart's desire. Your whole heart and your whole desire being toward God. And, and I had to ask myself, is my whole heart and my whole desire really toward God? And God kind of showed me something in my mind. I thought about a pie graph, but you think about it. What part of your heart is, is all your heart really devoted completely and totally to God? Or there's, is there just a small section of it for God that you only really think about on Sunday and Wednesday when you come to church? You know, is there some, is there some things in there reserved for doubt? Is there some things reserved in there for fear? Is there some things reserved in there for maybe hatred, envy, jealousy? You know, we're supposed to dwell together in unity. That's God's will for the church. For us to dwell together in unity. And there's a reason why that the, the Bible, that we call it the church family. Families have problems, am I right? Every, fa every family has problems. But the one thing about a good family is, if, if they're a good family and they're functioning the way they're supposed to be, when you have problems, you get together and you talk it out. You get together and you say, brother, I... You offended me, and I, I just want to talk to you about it. And I love you, and get it healed up, and let's move on. That's what that's what the family is there for. And I'm so thankful for the family of God. I, I remember the first day I walked into this church, Sister Ham come back there, and she sat beside me the whole service. <laughs> I, I mean that that really meant a lot to me. And I was 21 years old, and it really meant a lot to me because there's something about the church. You know, there's something about my church family. And I love this church from day one. Because I promise you, we are very blessed. blessed. Amen. We are very blessed to have the church that we have. And, and I, I, can, I can say that, but I don't know if you really get it. I mean, how many times have you heard missionaries come through here and say I just never found a church like this. I feel so much love and feel like that I belong here. And I'll tell you, I've been to several other churches. I, this ain't my first church to go to. I used to live in Texas County. You don't find this everywhere. You really don't. So we have to endeavor as a church to stay unified in love and mercy. We have to endeavor as a church to learn how to forgive one another. We have to endeavor as a church to learn how to walk together, to weep with those that weep, you know, to mourn with those that mourn, and then laugh with those that laugh. You know, we've got to, we, we've got to dwell together in unity. You know, we used to sing this song, and it, 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 it went like this, you're my brother, you're my sister, so come take me by the hand. And we used to get up, just walk around, shake each other's hands, and just love on one another, and pray for one another. I love that. And I'm not, I'm not dissing this church. I'm not. Because I love every one of you. We've all kind of, and, and I, I'm guilty of it too, taking our eyes off of God and putting them on our problems. You know, and, and, and quit trusting the Lord for everything. You know, and we're supposed to trust Him for everything. That's the main thing that God wants to see out of His people is that we learn how to trust Him no matter what. No matter what comes our way. We are to trust God. And with every decision, everything that comes our way, we go before him in prayer, Brother Brian. And we talk to him about it. Amen. Because he is our father. I didn't really have an earthly father. But I'm thankful that God is my father today. You know, and, and, and I believe that if we as a church, if we as individuals would find a place to pray on a daily basis, you people don't have to read our story, read us on, and only get to find the end that we missed out with God because we made some stupid mistake. You know, if we'll get on our knees daily and we'll walk with God and we'll follow God, when they read the end of our life story, because the Bible says we're a epistle read of all men, but 
if, if we get to the end of our lives, they're not going to say, oh, I don't know, missed out with God. Because we're supposed to stay home and walk in God's strength and not our own strength. Now, there's a lot of things you can learn from reading 1st and 2nd Kings and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. There's a whole lot in there. Because I got to a place in my life where I just felt like something was missing. You know, anybody ever feel like that? You feel like something's missing in your life? I'm talking about as far as, I'm talking about your spiritual walk with God. Like there's just something that just ain't right. You know, God talks to me. God blesses me. God uses me. God does a lot of stuff through me. But I don't always want to feel like there's something that just ain't right. You know, and I begin to, to, to really pray and talk to God about it. And, and got in the, in, in the Word and He started showing me that there are things that God expects us as His people to be doing on a daily basis. And, and, and those things are is to be offering up sacrifices. Yeah. And I ain't talking about going out and killing stuff and, and shedding blood. That's not what I'm talking about. Some people here that you guys probably the first place your mind went to. But I'm talking about offering up spiritual sacrifices. I'm talking about getting up early in the morning and giving God the first fruits of your day. Yeah. I'm talking about this being so important to us. That we cannot walk out our front door in the morning and feel good about ourselves yeah. without getting on our knees and praying. Yeah. Without, without finding some time to sit down and read our word. You know, without finding that, that good, that good quiet time, that good time that God just speaks to your heart. And God speaks to me a lot. And I mean, I don't know about you, but God speaks to me daily. And it ain't all the time and all the voice. But I'm glad it ain't an audible voice. I used to seek that all the time, Brother Brown. But I'm glad it ain't an audible voice. But that's what God expects us to do, is He expects us to seek His face daily. He expects us to humble ourselves. And one thing about the kings is when the king humbled himself, the people did too. And if we'll, if we'll humble ourselves before each other and before God and allow God to heal some things and allow God to fix some things in our lives, then we'll have, we'll have exactly the, the, the things that God wants us to have in the Spirit. And we won't be so hung up on this or that or, or he said, she said stuff. And we'll just take it to God. Lay it down at His feet. You know, and, and I want to do that. I want to do that daily. And, and another thing that, that he's been talking to me a lot about is, is forget about your past. Yesterday's gone. Amen. Yesterday's gone. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, that's all we got to say. I was thinking about the priests. They always they were offering sacrifices morning and evening. Continue. And that's what we have to do. We have to start our day with prayer. And we have to end our day with prayer. You know, if you'll repent, ask God to forgive you for the, the things that you did today that you're not proud of. If you'll do that tonight, guess what? Tomorrow morning you wake up, his verses are due every morning. So when you get up in the morning, yesterday's gone. You don't even have to worry about it. It's just a memory. But it doesn't have to be something that follows you around for the rest of your life. You can live where it belongs and that's in the past. And that's a, there's, those are some things that God expects us to do as his people. Is, is to love one another, to love him, to forget our past. And, and, and seek his face daily. Because he paid he paid the ultimate price so we could be able to bow our knee before us. Just so he could have a relationship with us. You know, and it's not just one of those, you know, once in a while face, Facebook relationships. We'll just call it that. Because those really aren't relationships. But we'll just, it ain't a Facebook relationship where you like some of his comments in the Bible. You know, and you share them with other people, you know. Maybe post a few pictures about the church service, you know. And thank you, Jesus, you know. It's not a Facebook relationship. I mean, it's a very real one-on-one -on -one relationship. And God has so many things that he has for his people. For his people. He has so much for us that he wants to show us, that he wants to give us, that he wants to do with us. There's so much knowledge and wisdom about God that it's, it's endless. And if we will get on our faces before Him and seek Him daily, He will show us things that will blow our minds. 
He's shown me a lot of things and he's blown my mind. But the Bible says that, you know, there's no height nor depth. You know, it's never ending. You can go out there as deep as you want to, Sister Smith. You get out there in that waters and swim in and just swim around out there with God and all his glory and honor and grace. And, and him show you stuff that a lot of people aren't really seeking. You know, but, but we have access to that. Everybody that bows their knee before God has access to those things. I mean, we, God, God still heals. God still blesses. You know, God still raises the dead. God still does all those things. He has not lost one bit of his power. He hasn't changed. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So how, how many of you here today remember the day that that, that he called you out as you bowed your knee before him. How many of you remember that? Not very many. <laughs> it, was a, it was an awesome day for me. Because I came from such a very dark background. And, and, and not just things that, that, that I brought upon myself as far as, you know, drugs and alcohol and stuff like that. But I, I didn't have that great of a thing in my life. I just, I just did you know, and for me to to come into a, to a church and, and actually have people love me and treat me like I'm their own son and treat me like I'm their own brother, and that right there was is amazing to me that we have such a blessing in the family of God. And I keep getting back to the family of God because that's that's the one thing that a lot of people in this world today. When they, come, when they come out of the world, they do not know what the definition of a real family is. They don't. So when, they, when some, they hear somebody say church family, they start, oh my goodness, sir. that's, that's going to be a trip. That, that's, I've only got four to deal with right now. I can't deal with 200 of them. You know? <laughs> but, if, if, but if we can actually give them a good example, Brother Dustin, if, if they walk through that door, we go up to them and hug their neck. Tell them that we love them. Ask them, anything can I can pray with you about? Anything I can pray for you about? You know, if we can show them what the true family of God is supposed to be like, you know, that's, that's what we're here for. This place is a place where we come to and we get strength to go back out there and lift his name up to bring people in so they can get their strength and go back out there and do the same thing. Amen. 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 Uh, I, I'm just, I'm very thankful just to be a part of this church. And, and I, I urge each and every one of you to just do the best that you possibly can do every single day and bow on your knee before God and seek His face and, and allow Him to show you those things in your life. That the, the kings, they had a very... Um, they had a very big job to do if they were going to do what was right in the sight of the Lord, which is probably why some of them never did it because they really didn't have the heart to do it. It took a big heart to do the thing that the kings that did right in the sight of the Lord to do because they had to go throughout all the land and get rid of all the all the false gods, all the images, cut down all the groves, you know, tear down all the altars that was erected to Baal, and rebuild the altar of the Lord, you know. And if we are going to be, you know, kings in our own lives as far as over the things that God has set in front of us, then we are going to have to get rid of some idols in our lives. Yeah. We're going to have to break down some altars that we've erected to the, the, the altars of fear and doubt and everything else. Amen, Brother Wayne. Uh, Amen. Uh, But we're going to have to tear some things down, brother. And we're going to have to start keep making sure on a daily basis that we keep that altar yeah. built up. And keep that all, to keep the vines and stuff cleaned off that altar. <laughs> to where we'll have a place to go lay our hearts and lay ourselves before the Lord. Yes. And there's just some things that, that we've got to do in our own lives that God expects us to do. Is to clean some things up. Yes. I mean, each and every one of us, you know, we, we can come up here tonight. And we can pray that God will lay stuff on our hearts, left and right, if we're really and truly honest yeah. before the Lord. He can lay stuff on our hearts, and we can walk out that door and 
just forget it. Yeah, come on, right? Come on. But I want the blessings of God on my life. I want the blessings of God on my family. You know, I, I, I want to walk in His statutes. I want to walk in His love. And I want to walk in His grace. And I want to walk in His mercy. You know, I, I don't want my life to be uh, be something people mourn over. I want my life to be a uh, be a witness and testimony to how great, how awesome my God is. Amen. Amen. But God expects us to tear some things down, and He expects us to build some things up. And I, I can't answer for you. I could only answer for myself. And I know God has talked to me a lot, and I've been praying and fasting for this church. And, and I know that. A lot of the stuff I, I, that God has laid on my heart tonight is, is, is for you. It's for the people in this church. And I'm not going to sit up here and doubt that, that, that I missed it somehow because I know I did. Because I know the voice of my shepherd. Amen. Because I talked to him daily. And I, and I just, and my, my prayer for you tonight is, is that you would, that you would come to this altar and you would actually get real with God. Yeah. Take off the facade. Take off the mask. Yeah. Take off those things that, that stand between you and God. And just really lay yourself out before Him. And say, God, is there anything in my life that you want me to get rid of? Because going to heaven and living for you is the most important thing in my life. And it should be the most important thing in our lives. Because if it's not, then why are we here? Amen. So that's all, Stan. That's all I got. Um, Good. Hallelujah. I just want to be a blessing. I just want to be a blessing to God, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to, for Him to just be a blessing to me. I want to be a blessing to God. I want my life. To scream grace and mercy. All my life to, to display the grace and mercy that he's shown me, bro. Because if I sat here and told you all the things that that I used to do before God found me, you would probably not ever talk to me again. Amen. Amen. But God in his grace and his mercy loved me enough. Loved me enough. That he was willing to walk up beside me and put his arm around me. The God of heaven and earth, you know, was, was willing to walk up beside me and put his arm around me and tell me that I love you. He loved me when he found me, but he loved me enough not to leave me that way. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are thankful for the word of the Lord? Amen. How many of you are thankful for your church? Amen. How many of you are thankful for a family? Amen. For the way that I hope that I can get rid of those things in my life so that I can be a better part of the family. So I can treat my family like they're meant to be treated. I want you to look around tonight. Man, look around the family, amen. It's a family reunion every time we go to the end. Amen. Go and find that person. And we're going to sing a song. And I want you to put your own. 